All right, in this lecture, we are going to do a drill. Uh, so please carve out a little bit of time um, and make sure that you can get through this. Uh, these drills are really important because they're really sort of showing that we can, uh, no. In this lecture, we are going to do a drill. Uh, I'm going to ask you to build a course class. And let me go ahead and tell you what I'd like you to do. And then please carve out some time to do it. And then I'm going to show you my solution. So please uh, write a, a course, uh, a class called course. Uh, the constructor for this class should take as input a number n and create a list. So you're going to store all of your n students in a list of n students. Of course, you should be using the student class that we just defined up top. So make sure that gets imported into your uh, Jupyter notebook. Um, each name can just be a random string um, uh, for the name. I don't care what it is. Uh, a random a grade between 0 and 100, and a random height between 150 and 200. Now, at this point, I've shown you, you should know how to compute a random number. I haven't shown you how to compute a random string. So go ahead and search for that online, Stack Overflow, Google, whatever. Search for how do you generate a random string in Python. You'll find somebody showed you a little bit of code snippet to do that. I'll show you my version down below. If you don't want to do that, pick a random number for the, for the name. I don't care. That's not really the point of this. Um, and I, for now, I only want you to write just one member function. So the member function is going to be the built-in uh, print function, underscore, underscore, str, underscore, underscore. And what this should do is print all of the students in the class by calling the students print function. So you shouldn't do the printing yourself, of course. You should just be making, taking advantage of the students uh, print function. All right, so constructor and print. And if you want to get fancy, uh, write another function that plots a histogram or distribution of the grades for all n students. Okay, that takes a little bit more time, and we'll use some of those uh, uh, visualization tools that we use. Okay, take a little time to do that, please, and then when we come back, I will show you my solution. All right, so I hope that you got that solution. Uh, let me just remind you what the student class looked like. We had a constructor. It takes as input a name, an exam grade, and a height, and it shoves those into the objects with the names name, grade, height. We have the print function, which returns the name, the grade, and the height, comma delimited. Um, and I guess here I've taken out the parentheses, so there's no parentheses. Uh, three accessor functions, self.name, self.grade, and self.height, are get returned, height rather, are returned when you call the function get height, get grade, and get name. And this was just our is failing, which we don't need for the course class, but I just put it in there because we had it in there before. Okay, so let's look at our course uh, class. So I'm going to show you the constructor and the print statement, and then I'm going to show you um, the, uh, the histogram um, uh, code. All right, so here's the constructor. It takes as input n. Now here I'm going to store the enrollment number or, the, or a variable called enrollment with n. You don't really have to do that because the length of this string, which I'm about to define, has it embedded. But instead of always computing the length of a list, I find it easier to just go ahead and do uh, store it separately. For i in range 0 to n, then I'm going to generate a random string. That's this function down here, which I'll show you in a minute. That's the name. I'm going to generate a random grade between 0 and 100, uniformly distributed. I don't care how you, how you distribute it. And I'm going to generate a random height uh, between 150 and 200. And then I'm going to go ahead and create a student with ng and the a variable there. And I'm, so that will hand me back a object. I'm going to shove that object into the students list. So notice up here that self.students, that's the list associated with the object, is the empty list. And I'm going to append, 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 append n objects, each of type student. So at this point, at the end of the constructor, I have a class with two things, the number of people in my class and a list of objects of type student. Now, for the print, this is a little tricky. Remember that print associated with an object itself has to return something. So when I call this function, I know that I have to call the print function associated with the self students. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to cheat a little bit here. I'm going to put a for loop here that says for i in range 0 to self dot enrollment. So there you can see, I, again, I'm using the end that was passed into the constructor. And I'm going to just go ahead and manually call the print statement 
associated with the ith element of the student, which is a list that itself is an object. And so this will call the str function of the student class, and it will print, 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 print. And then what I'm going to return to the print function is end of class, I am done. So the problem here, of course, is if I had a return statement here, I would have only returned a single student. Now I could have done something else. I could have built a list of all of the student names and then returned that. That would have been the other way to do it. So this was a little tricky and it was a test to see if you understood how the return function works. Because if you had put a return self.students of uh, uh, self, uh, uh, sorry, if you had put return self.students.grade or something, then we would have, first of all, it wouldn't have worked because you would have only gotten one and you weren't tapping into the print function. So the only way you can do that is in this way right here. All right, uh, this little bit of code is a little cryptic. I'm not going to go through the details of it. I actually found this on Stack Overflow. And all it does is it generates uh, random letters um, of length, a length that I passed in, and I just passed that value in to be 10. You could have done this in any of number of different ways. And then at this point, I can create a course with n is equal to 100. And then when I print c, it will simply print everybody using that print statement, which of course is calling the students print. So let me go ahead and just show you that optional one I wanted you to do, which is to, to display a histogram of all of the grades. So grade hist, grade histogram is the name of the function. When you build a histogram, you have to decide on how many bins you're going to use. I'm going to wire that up to be 10. And now you have to think about how to do this. So remember that the histogram function takes as input either a NumPy or a list. All I've got is a bunch of objects. So what do I have to do? I've got to rip out those individual grades, shove them into a NumPy array or into a list, and then go ahead and display. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to define an empty list called grades for i in range 0 to self.enrollment. So for every element in this object's what? That what is enrollment? It is the n that I passed in. Right? So remember, this is a function of the course class, not the student class. So that enrollment is n that was passed into the constructor. So for each i in that, or for each element of the list, please, course is, self is a reference to course. Reach into the list called students. Reach into the ith element, which is a student, and call the get grade function. That will hand the grade back, and I'm going to append that to the grades list. So this for loop will spin, 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 grabbing the ith element of the list, each of which is a student, grabbing the grade for that student and shoving it into a list. And now grades is just a list of numbers. And now I can call plot.hist. So plot.hist of grades, that's what I just created. The number of bins, that's 10. And then just a little bit of graphics. The face color is blue and the edge color is black. I'm going to put a label in here, grade count, and I'm going to go ahead and show the plot. And so when I call c dot, c of course being the course, grade hist, I call that function and I get something that looks like a little bit of a histogram here. One of the most important things when you are building up classes is to remember these functions are, who, which class do these functions belong to? What do they have access to? In this case, the course class had a list. Each of those, each element of the list was a student. And so you always have to remember that, that sort of reference, how you're getting to things. Yeah? And it gets even more complicated, as you saw with the eyes and then the face and then the crowd is as you build these things up, you've got to keep diving into them. And so it's really important to keep everything straight. Always remember what your member functions are and what the data is associated with each class. Okay, that's it for now. When we come back, we're going to do even some more objects and classes and build some more complex um, objects and classes. And we'll do a couple more drills down the line. I'll see you in a little bit.